Dibley here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cheap and simple pelmet uh, from Architrave. So, uh, for instance, uh, these units, uh, when they uh, when they were put up, they did not have, uh, they did not come with any kind of pelmet or anything like that. And um, I wanted the ability to use uh, to put LED lighting underneath. So obviously, I, I wanted something to hide hide the LED lighting and fix the LED lighting too. So I was looking at the price of the uh, Pelmet and the Pelmet is quite expensive. So um, as I'm on quite a limited budget, I had a look, and s look to see what other options are available. And one of the options is Architrave, which you can get from B&Q for quite a reasonable price. So here's the length of Architrave. Um, this, this is just a MDF that's been um, pre-primed. Uh, pre um, normally you would expect to find architra architrave round the edge of a door hiding the join between the door lining and the plasterboard. As you can see this seems to work quite well, it's a good alternative if you're on a tight budget. So today um, I'm going to have a go at um, adding a little bit more. I haven't got some there um, so I'm going to fit some to that, those cupboards um, and just complete the work in the kitchen for that. Um, and I thought I would document it as I do it and um, you know and maybe it might give you some inspiration to have a go yourself. So the first job is to decide uh, whether you want the edge to be flush or whether you want to set it back in. I've just for simplicity I've gone for a flush edge although you can see that that's sticking out slightly that's my bad workmanship. Um, so what I need to do on here is I need to measure as accurately as possible from the wall to the edge of there and then take off a couple of millimetres. Uh, the reason is, is you can, a little gap at the back, which we can use to make sure that we can get this front edge as flush to that front, to that front edge as possible, um, is, is very useful if you, can, if you can just slide it forward and back a little bit. Like I say, the, the little gap at the end is, is something that you probably wouldn't really notice too much. So, uh, so measure accurately, then take off, say, maybe two millimetres. The distance for mine is 291, so I will make it 289 millimetres. Ensure you've got the right end, so this is the end that is going to butt up against the wall. And then approximately the distance you need, uh, wrap masking tape all the way around the architrave. This will protect the architrave when you cut it. Then measure and mark with a sharp pencil your, your precise measurement. Looks like mine is very slightly out, so I'll remove the tape. I was looking for 289, it looks like I've actually got 288 there, so that's misleading on the camera, that's, that's better, on the camera it looks totally different, oh of course my, the reason is, is because the, <laughs> the camera viewfinder is up the other end of the phone, right, so uh, as you can see that's on 289, I'm now going to, I'm now going to put a, a square line across there and that will be my cutting line. So I've marked my square line, I've also marked the wastage and when you turn it up you can see I've marked the 45 degree cut and the wastage. Remember to make sure that the 45 degree moves away from the outer, the outer edge. So that way when I cut there I will remove that and then the next cut I will have to do on this architrave will be 45 that way so that when these meet up they make a perfect right angle. I'm now going to go and set up uh, my chop saw. Um, you could do this, you could cut this with a, a hand saw and a uh, mitre block, um, or um, I'm gonna, I've got a fine blade which I'm going to put on my chop saw and I'm going to use that. 48 teeth saw, uh, which is the finest I can find for the size saw that I've got. Lightly sound the cut edge, but try not to misshape any of the edges because we want to keep them as square as possible. Yeah, this is a very, this is very slight off. Um, hopefully try and keep that as square as possible, otherwise you will see a gap when you fit them up. Offer the pelmet up, and you'll see if I push it all the way back, then I've got a very slight gap at this end. That will give us a little bit of adjustment room so we can bring that right up to the corner and meet the other ed the edge of the other piece. Length from there through to there. Um, in my case I need to measure up to that corner there uh, because there's a trim a corner trim in there. 
Um, when you measure, remember to add on enough for the 45 degree cut that will go away from this corner. If you, if you measure and cut square, then you will not be able to put a beveled edge on there. You should now have a length where the two cut edges are both angled at the same 45 degree angle, making a parallelogram. Uh, the 45 degree on the main length back the other way, so that when these two are joined together, we should have a fairly square corner with the edges. meeting up nicely and hopefully once they're in square as little gap as possible. First the angle of the remaining piece. Um, it was previously that way. Um, remember to tape, tape the wood before cutting and when you sand only sand very gently. Just take any any furry burrs off as you really don't want to uh, change the sharpness of the angles that your saw has cut. Must, I've, I've went out and bought a brand new saw um, to do this uh, because the last one I did with a, a worn blade and as you may, may have noticed on the uh, the previous, you know, the earlier in the video, um, the edges are not quite as sharp as they could be. So uh, hopefully the new blade will uh, mean that everything will be crisp and sharp. Mark your final cut. Remember to uh, mark the wastage so you know which side to cut. Also remember to take two millimeters off the total length um, to allow for a little bit of sliding backwards and forwards to ensure that the corners will meet perfectly. Previously I've used these. Um, these I think were available at Wilco's but you probably get them at B&Q or anywhere else. Um, I quite like them because they've they've got quite a wide area. You could use furniture blocks, but these have got got a longer length to them, so um, I find them they, they hold everything a bit squarer. If you have a look up under here. You can see how I fitted it. So that's an example of um, what we're going to do next. Or maybe one of the other blocks to ensure that the the block that we are going to drill holes for is flush against this surface. So I push that block up against there and I know that will be flush. Make a depth flag with a piece of tape on your pilot drill um, and this will make sure that when we drill up to the flag you can see the drill will not burst through the other side. So we use that as our indicator to make sure we don't drill too deep. A big enough screw that will hold the bracket firmly and will resist um, pulling out if someone accidentally um, nudges or hits the um, pelmet when it's in place. But um, don't select one that's so large that it might risk bursting through um, through the front surface when you screw to it. So with this in mind, I'm going to take the left hand screw and go for that one, as the other one I think might push through or make raise a little bobble on the uh, on the finished surface. Ensure the holes are lined up, ensure the bracket is flush against the surface using one of the other little blocks or a piece of wood. And then just screw the bracket home. Put both screws in first and when both screws are started then just pinch down. You don't need to pinch it particularly hard just so the plastic starts to grip and then that's given a nice smooth flush surface there. One more, just find the holes. Wind one in a little bit first. I'm sure the bracket is pushed up so it's nice and flush. Pinch it up. Pinch the second one up, 
and that should be fine. There's a very slight ridge there, possibly. Backen that one off, push it back, and that should be fine. Is to offer it up and mark the position of the holes on uh, on the brackets, uh, the position of the holes in the cupboard, um, and then we can screw that up. So I'll do that and then show you when it's finished. Um, it's a bit more useful if you've got someone else to help you with this. Is um, put a piece of wood up against the edge of the cupboard there, and then you can clamp your your thumb. Uh, you can use your thumb and your fingers to clamp the pelmet up against the edge to ensure that when you mark it the uh, front edge will be as flush as possible. Okay, so that's that one up. Just make sure you leave this edge just slightly further back than the corner of that so that when the other one touches up it's not pushed further further forward than this edge. Um, I've managed to get a very slight lip there which I'm not overly happy with but unfortunately that's just the way it is. I'm not going to move it now. Remember also when you use the screws uh, to select screws that will not break through the thickness of your the bottom of your cupboards is to move on to the long piece and mark the brackets for that. Um, it's quite a short length, I think it's about 500 uh, millimeters, uh, maybe 600 millimeters, I can't remember now. Um, I will probably just use two brackets, I think any longer, and I'd have probably gone for another one. If I look under here, the spacing you can see the sort of spacing that I've done for those, which is probably around 500 millimetres. And that's been okay, that's been on for a couple of months. Um, and I, I have knocked it a couple of times and it seems to be fine. But feel free to put more brackets in if you prefer. Brackets attached to the, uh, to the next length. Remember to drill with your depth flag on so you don't burst through the front end. Uh, remember to select screws that will not be too long so they won't burst through either. Uh, next job is to position it up and um, drill the holes in the bottom of the units. Okay, so that's the uh, the, the two bits joined, um, and the join's reasonably good. Um, probably something I probably didn't think about, and probably should have said. Um, when cutting the length for this, don't cut the exact length. Cut it either a mil or two mil, slightly slightly shorter, um, so that you've got a bit of room to play with up there. I've just had to go and trim it again on the uh, chop saw so that I can get the next bit in. That's probably something to consider. Okay, so the next job for me is to take it all back down again and then paint it. Uh, one thing I will need to do is I shall make, need to make sure I prime all the sawn edges um, so that the top coat will take to the, take to the MDF. Probably need a couple of coats because the uh, MDF seems to suck the life out of paint, or <laughs> suck, suck the moisture out of the paint anyway. Um, so I'm gonna paint it. Um, you may choose to do something else, um, possibly, I, I wonder if Plastico in aerosols may be a good option, it's probably quite hard wearing, um, probably gives a nice finish as well. If I hadn't have already painted the other side and put my LED lighting on, I would possibly have considered that now, um, however all my, all my LED lighting is fitted to the back of the other Alcatraves, <laughs> or helmets, uh, so I won't be taking that down again. Um, so uh, yeah, so. Uh, Feel free to leave any comments. Um, thank you very much for watching.